All right, so hello everyone and welcome to another edition of The Verdict. I'm Sparian Pro 1000 and today I'm going to be talking about the long-awaited, the game so many people have just been praying and hoping and waiting for, Resident Evil 2. The Verdict is here, and I don't think I really even need to go too deep into this. At this point, it's pretty much unanimous. I just want to give my thoughts on it, and it probably will be pretty short because of that, because there's not too much to talk about. This game is kick-ass. And, and that's that's just well, no other way to put it. Capcom delivered. They've been delivering for a while now, which is pretty crazy. So since uh, Resident Evil 7, like I said back then, way back and I think it was 2017, that game was good and they have so much potential. The last thing I want to do is see them, you know, lose it. And if you remember, back in 2017 when I played Resident Evil 7, I gave it a 90 out of 100. And I said, I think I said a couple of those things back then. I, I didn't watch it ahead of time because, you know, it kind of was irrelevant. But um, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that Resident Evil 2 is a fun game. So let's just get right into it. Resident Evil 2 is a survival horror action shooter. Unlike the original Resident Evil 2, which was released in 1998 for, I believe, the N64, the PS2, and then it was ported to a bunch of different things like the PC, I think maybe the PC, uh, the GameCube probably the ps2 it's been on the ps3 etc so on so forth and maybe it was on a sega console as well because sega was back uh back out around then resident evil 2 was a survival horror game but the main difference that you'll immediately notice about this version of the game this remake of the game compared to the original is not only the graphics i mean that's the first thing you'll notice but the second thing that you'll notice is that this game is more of a traditional third person shooter and more in line with, I want to say, Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil 4. Uh, you can move while shooting, which is not in line with Resident Evil 4, I guess. But it's from over-the-shoulder shooting, which they call the behind view, which is essentially where the camera's located. The camera is always behind you in this game. It's not just, like, stapled to, to a static spot. It can move around with you as you move around, which is pretty cool. Unlike Resident Evil 2 which even though at the time it was considered to be a great game, the camera angles were very limited, and while that did add to the horror, it did kind of also limit the gameplay, because you could only see things from certain predefined angles. In fact, they, I believe the old Resident Evils, up until Resident Evil Zero, and maybe Resident Evil Code Veronica might have done this, used pre, pre-rendered, or not pre-rendered, I'm sorry, um, static backgrounds that are basically 2D images that you kind of run along, and they got really good at it, actually. Uh, Resident Evil 1 might be the only one where they you could kind of tell. But they got really good at making it seem like fake 3D. Which, and then at some points, you know, they did have cool stuff with it as well. But Resident Evil 2 is a complete reimagining, a complete remake of that original formula while staying very faithful to it. So from the literal opening of the game where they have a new segment in a gas station to the end of the game where you're in the laboratory... Everything about this game has been touched on, it's been improved, while paying great respect to the original, which is what I like a lot about Resident Evil 2. There's a lot of modernizations in it. For instance, you have self-defense weapons, a la Resident Evil 4 with the knife, and Resident Evil, Rema uh, Resident Evil Remake with the personal defense weapons. This time around, you have frag grenades, you have um, flashbangs, you have knives that you could use. The knives have durability in this game, and you could pick up more than one. There's also other things, like you can use them out of combat, for instance. So you could use them to, like, check zombies to see if they're dead. You could use grenades offensively to deal damage. Then there's a bunch of different weapons that you could swap between. It's cool to see how the Resident Evil 7 engine has translated so well into being able to make survival horror from either a first person or especially in my opinion a third person perspective the first thing that i will say however about resident evil 2 is i'm not going to talk about the gameplay too much i want to actually talk about the graphics of this game this game looks gorgeous and i played it on a playstation normal i, I feel like every review i do of a ps4 game i have to say that um just to you know not say that like i'm playing it on a ps4 pro or anything like that i played it on the playstation 4 uh just the normal edition and it looks amazing. The lighting, like I said in Resident Evil 7, is probably the best part of this engine. And that's not to say the other parts are lacking. It, I actually jump sometimes at my own shadow in this game because of the way that it appears. 
and it is really creepy it adds a whole new brand of just horror and just this feeling of unease into the game when the lighting looks as good as it does and, and that just might be an aesthetic thing based on horror but it does actually play a huge role in getting you in the mood and getting you creeped out so for instance you open a door you can't immediately see what's beyond the door light you know you have to take a minute to process it yourself and okay well now i see that there's nothing beyond there there's a couple points where i opened a door and a zombie was waiting right outside and that actually happened yesterday when i played leon b and that was hilarious that was probably the best part of the playthrough because i was genuinely horrified I, I had no clue what was going on it startled the, the ever-living shit out of me which was amazing and the graphics of this game look amazing then the other thing I want to say about the presentation is that the sound is good. Sound plays a very important part. The zombie growls aren't just like low moans and maybe a little bit of excitement when they see you. The zombies will snarl their ass off. And that's what I like about this game is that there's a lot I like about this game. I like that they have this deep understanding of how important sound and other aesthetics are to a horror game. So for instance, if you have something like Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3, you know that in those games, the most important part about them is that they have a deep, I'm sorry, hold on. They have a deep understanding of how not just gameplay and seeing horrifying stuff on the screen can make you feel uneasy, but just how important that is to a game as a whole. And the unreleased game Silent Hills and what little we have of it that is tangible, which is PT, um, actually probably would have done something similar to that effect, which would have been amazing, and it is truly a tragedy we do not have this game. But we have Resident Evil 2, and I think that that's probably a major portion of this game I like. Now, I would be horrifically remiss if I did not elaborate further on one factor in the game, and this is going to tie into the gameplay, so bear with me. This is both sound and gameplay, and if you played the game, you know anything about the memes you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Mr. X. Mr. X is in this game. The reason why I want to talk, well, he was in the original, but in the original, he only appeared in the B scenario where this game is divided up into two separate campaigns. There's two different characters to play as and two campaigns for each character, leading to four different campaigns you can play. Uh, the first campaign, which is the A campaign, is the typical basic run through the game. And, you know, you just kind of do whatever. The second run through of the game is the B campaign. It's supposed to kind of be a storyline supplement with remixed puzzles and higher difficulty, which is kind of nice that they added that. that even back then, that would have been crazy to think that they took a campaign and boom, we added more to it to give it more replayability. So credit where it's due. But perhaps the biggest part about it all is that Mr. X is a huge factor in this game, at least for the beginning portions. And, you know, that's what most people will play. And I really love that about this game, is that there is something out there stalking you. For those of you who don't know what Mr. X is, Mr. X is a tyrant who's designed to hunt down any survivors of the Raccoon City incident, which is the setting of the game. And he is a force to be reckoned with. In the original game, not so much. I think he doesn't really chase you from room to room. He just kind of appears at random points in the story. He doesn't really do too much. He's, he just kind of exists uh, as, a, as, a, as a thing in the B scenario to kind of mix it up. But if you leave the room and then he's just gone, it's kind of really lame. And I think they reused that very same idea for Nemesis with how Nemesis will constantly chase you and be on your ass. And in this game, they change that completely. He feels more like an even evolved Nemesis. He will chase you through rooms. There's only very few rooms that he can't go in to give you a little bit of breathing room, such as safe rooms or important plot rooms. But other than that, Mr. X is free to hound you throughout the police station, constantly making his presence known through his use of heavy footsteps, his trademark uh, black trench coat and, and top hat, giving him away from the other zombies. He pushes them out the way. He does not give a, a flying shit about what's in his way. He will gladly do whatever he can to pursue you. And the other thing about it is that it's kind of similar to Alien Isolation. He's always trying to listen for you. He's always looking out to hear any clue that could let him know where you are and what he can do to get to you. And I think that's one of the coolest things about it is that he's not just some random entity patrolling the station. He doesn't really give a shit. You know, he just if he meets you, cool, but otherwise he just doesn't care. No, Mr. X is pretty determined to find you. In fact, he will gladly patrol the, the last area that he heard noise from. He will gladly 
uh, you know, try to find ways to manipulate, or not manipulate, but fi try to find ways. I mean, granted, he can't do, like, ridiculous superhuman th stuff. Like, he can't hop between different floors, like, up and down balconies or whatever. He has to use staircases like you do. But at the same time, this makes him an ever-present blockade throughout the game that you have to sort of contest with. And so I do like, I love it. It's so good. It, it really adds to the horror, but this leads to one of my big negatives, I think, about the game. I wouldn't say it's huge, per se, but there's not a lot of travel room. There's not a lot of different ways you can dip and dive uh, through different places, and especially in the latter portions of the game. The game feels fairly linear and claustrophobic. There's not really too much to explore. It's just a couple different rooms towards the end. And I think that maybe they could have expanded on that a little bit. I think that might have been a little bit cooler to have a few more bigger rooms, maybe a couple more challenges at the end to kind of keep it varied. But the game is still meant to be played in, in the same fashion of the older games, which is a very short and sweet horror game. So I can't fault it too much for, you know, staying true to the original source material. But it would have been cooler to spend more of the game dipping and dodging for Mr. X, given how much of a big presence he has in this game's existence, I guess, for lack of a better word. He definitely defines a lot of this game. The memes about him came in pretty much overnight. And I absolutely love the fact that they have something like that. And to tie it all back to the whole idea of sound, the sound is such a huge role in this because Mr. X gives away his whole position through sound. It is a constant terrifying idea to think that every noise that you make will possibly alert him to your, where you are and you know possibly force him to come after you and maybe make you change your plans and everything that he does is heard by you and it's just very crazy to be on a different floor and hear him pound pound pounding away you know doing different things it's it's amazing i i, I know i'm kind of going overkill but it, it is quite something to see that and I do love that about this game. Now, moving on into gameplay, uh, it's your typical, I don't want to say it's your typical third person shooter. It's, it's, I mean, but it kind of is. You have your behind view where you could shoot enemies. You could aim for headshots to do more damage. There's not a lot of crazy stuff like there is in Resident Evil 6 where you could like kick zombies. You know, the combo system that they started in Resident Evil 4 where you could like kick zombies away and you could do various things. Um, they don't really have a lot of that in this game. You also can't really like do crazy dodge rolls like Resident Evil 6. So for better or for worse, this game is not trying to emulate that ridiculously. And I do kind of like that. I also see how it could have been added, but I think that it's better that they keep it simple, I guess, on their first outing. And even by me saying that they kept it simple, they pretty much did anything but keep it straightforward and simple. But... The, the game plays from a third-person perspective. You have to solve puzzles by collecting items, as, you know, a la typical Resident Evil. They try to give a little bit more of an elaborate explanation for a lot of this by saying that stuff like, oh, well, the police station used to be a museum, so it would have all these, like, crazy, you know, puzzles and things like that. Uh, this, this one company has a very, like, uh, chess-themed uh, orientation, so they have all these puzzles themed off of chess, and stuff like that. They try to make it more believable than just like these crazy puzzles like you might have seen in some of the other games and whatnot. But it, I do like that. I mean, needless to say, it's great and it really adds a good a good theme to the game. It's not just like a, a shooter where you just shoot everything in front of you like maybe Dead Space would be, but the, the difficulty would be higher. And I mean, speaking of difficulty, this game is still hard. The zombies gladly will take a bite out of you. And I mean, granted, Resident Evil has never really played around with that, but the zombies in this game will pursue you. They do the Resident Evil remake thing where they will go through doors, possibly, into other rooms, which is, you know could possibly lead to adaptive challenge. And speaking of adaptive, the game has the same adaptive difficulty that Resident Evil 4 and onward had, which means that the game will constantly alter the difficulty based on how good or how badly you're doing. If you die a lot... The game will give you a little bit more leniency, they'll give you a little more ammo, they'll give you a few more uh, enemies um, that can, you know, or uh, the enemies will go down faster. If you're doing really well, the enemies will take more damage to try to, you know, adapt to the player's skill level, which is pretty cool. Uh, that said, um, I think the most important thing about this game, though, is that there are lots of moments of horror. The boss fights are pretty terrifying. There's a lot of things going on with it. There's different phases to each of them. Um, the game has a sparse amount of ammo. You know, we're not talking like Resident Evil 4 levels of just mowing people down in front of you. 
which could be whatever. I mean, I think Resident Evil 4 was a big departure point, and while people liked it, it was the last big thing that they liked from Resident Evil for a while. And I think that Capcom has a good direction here. Now, the story of Resident Evil 2 is pretty much identical to Resident Evil 2. That sentence made no sense. The 2019 remake is essentially identical to the 1999 original release in terms of story. Uh, you play as either Claire Redfield, who is a college student and brother of... Or brother, sister to Chris Redfield, who was a main character in the first game. Or you play as Leon uh, S. Kennedy, uh, a young up-and-coming police recruit who was reporting in for his first day on the job, even though having been told to stay away from Raccoon City a week prior. Fate has them meet at a gas station outside of the city outskirts, and from there they head on in to see what's going on, not knowing that they're actually walking into hell, basically. And the start of the game is pretty straightforward. On your A campaign, you get the story. Uh, you get Leon and, and this mysterious woman, Ada Wong, who is an FBI agent who's trying to stop uh, and put an end to all this by exposing what caused this viral outbreak throughout the city. And on the flip side of that, you have Leon, or excuse me, you have Claire Redfield, who's looking for her brother, but ends up uh, happening upon a mysterious young girl called Sherry Birkin and her whole side story. And obviously, this is it doesn't really replace any elements from the original. Some details have been changed, certain characters have had their fates altered. I guess to better fit with the the feel of the game and some of them i actually really like i think that some of the stuff is pretty cool now the only negative i have to say about this entire thing is that the there, there is still no real definitive canon version of the events it's kind of like how in resident evil 1 there is no definitive canon version of resident evil 1 there's certain events that we know to be true based on certain characters surviving in the timeline that we have for the games but for instance, there's no timeline, and I, if I reviewed Resident Evil Remake, I probably said this. I can't, I can't remember if I did. That must have been 2015, right? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I did. I gave it a 94. That's pretty good. Um, but the, there is no like definitive version of the events. So, for instance, if you play as Claire, you never really meet Ada. You never even see any hint that she exists. And likewise, if you play as Leon, Sherry just exists in the end cutscene. Um, because, you know, they have a, u a unified ending. But it's kind of like, you're not really sure what events happened when. I was kind of hoping that the B scenario would elaborate on that, maybe by adding completely new areas uh, to a lot of the different parts of the game, you know, mixing it up, maybe adding a side stuff. So it makes, it, it makes sense. While the A campaign is doing certain things, the B campaign is also doing other things that aren't just remixes of the A campaign. And while remixes of certain things are fine, I think they sh could have also added maybe a few extra things to the B campaign. So, especially towards the end of the game, we're not just running through the same puzzles, the same areas. You know, we could have different things happen to kind of make it all congeal into one consistent plot line for each of the different ones. So, like, Claire A and Leon B could be one timeline, and then Leon A, Claire B could be its own one. Um, but that's real. I I'm not even kidding you. That is the only negative I have to say about this game, is that it might be a little, a little too short, and the B campaigns should feel like more like compliments to the rest of the game. That is it. I don't have anything else negative to say about this game, and even those two negatives aren't... I won't even weigh them that heavily. Um, so what would I give Resident Evil 6? Or Resident Evil 6? Resident Evil 2? Yeah, right, we're going to hop right into the ending. Well, let's think about this. Good story which we know because we have a lot of different games that lean off it. And it's just a fun, interesting zombie apocalypse story, even if you want to look at it standalone. Amazing gameplay, great horror elements. And on top of that, the game looks so visually appealing. The, the graphics are stellar. And the sound, my God, the sound and lighting are God tier. And Capcom, you have pure gold on your hands. But... Ultimately, what would I give it? I'd give it a 96. This game is probably one of the best survival horror games I've ever played. Uh, I would say that alongside Dead Space 2, maybe, and Resident Evil 4, this game is up there. And there have been a lot of good Resident Evil games on the verdict. I actually can't remember where I put Resident Evil 0, if I did play it. But, um, yeah, I did. I think I reviewed it late. But that's what I'm going to give Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil 2, the 2019 remake. Capcom. I, I think I said this in the Resident Evil 7 uh, verdict. I'll say it again. Keep this going. It's good. 
keep it going. I'm not saying every year. I, a lot of people are rumoring that there's going to be a Resident Evil 3 remaster coming in a year or two. Because uh, they said Capcom, I think, might have hinted or said that they will do it if there's enough fan demand. There is fan demand. Do this. And I think that this is a good kind of thing that they could do. I don't want to say that they should make this their whole crux of existence. But it is a good idea, maybe every few years, remake an old Resident Evil game. They have a lot of old Resident Evil games. This engine works. And I don't mind tweaks to it, but keep it going. This is what people wanted years ago when Operation Raccoon City was a flop and all these other games, Umbrella Core. Yes, that's all I'll say. Keep doing this. There's so many good games that could be benefit from this. And at the same time, you know, maybe you, you mess around in some remakes, you try some things. It could make the next big game better. And I love it. But keep this horror element. Keep these nice big open worlds that feel pseudo-realistic. Um, you know, you gotta have suspense of, of belief. But there's nothing else to say. I like this game. This is one of the best games I think I've reviewed on The Verdict. Uh, granted, I gave some games higher scores. But you know what? This game deserves the 96 that it got. And if they had just tweaked a few more things, I think I would have given it even higher. So that's it for this verdict. I'm just going to leave it at that. I humbly beseech you, buy this game if you're looking for any survival horror, a good action game, anything. You will not be disappointed. And with that, I'm Spray and Pro 1000, and I will see you guys next time on The Verdict.